started, I'll say hello to everybody. Welcome. It's so nice to see so many people. So I made the drive up from Sydney and Wollongong and near and far. Some people here from Gosford. Um, even the northern bits of the Central Coast. Anyone here from the Central Coast? Pull up your hand. Canberra? No? Oh, we've got a next camera. We're also tonight being live streamed for the community to tune in and watch. I don't know how many people we've got online. Um, so you might see my eye gaze sometimes move towards the camera. So I'll say hello to everyone on the live stream. Thanks for watching. I'll introduce myself. My name is Phil Harper. This is my sign name. I'm from Melbourne. I'm not going to go into the New South Wales Victorian rivalry, but uh, yes, I'm from Melbourne. And I'm here in two roles. I'm the acting chair of the Games Organising Committee. And in my second role, I'm the general manager of Deaf Sports Australia. Another person, obviously, and sadly, is not here tonight is Leonie Jackson. She passed away uh, a couple of months ago now. Um, I'd like to take time to acknowledge Leonie for um, all her work and her life and how she's impacted all of us. And I know that she's got a lasting effect on many people in this room here. Um, we all have a bit of grief from Leonie, but we know that Leonie would want us to all out her sleeves and move on. She was the chair of the Games Organising Committee prior to me. Um, I'm just in the acting position at the moment. Um, so we are still looking for a replacement uh, chair as soon as possible. If you have any questions, please hold on to them until the end. We're going to have a QA and a at the end. And for our friends on the live stream, if you have questions, um, we will ask you to send them in and we'll show them up here on the screen. So please send in your questions and hopefully we'll have enough time to cover all the questions from here in the room and on the live stream tonight. So um, we'll hope technology will be our friend and we'll be able to answer all your questions. We've already got one question. Yes, there are interpreters. Two interpreters sitting here at the front. I'll go through them. So yes, we have two interpreters here at the front. Are you able to hear them? Uh, so I'll introduce our two interpreters uh, for this evening. We have Kylie and Alana. They'll be our interpreters for this evening, our voices for this evening. Uh, and they may also do some interpreting here at the front as well. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, before we start with the proceedings, we'd like to do a welcome to I'd like to ask Hayley Martin to come up and do our Welcome to Country. Hayley. Hello everybody. I'd like to thank the Australian Deaf Games for inviting me here this evening to acknowledge the land that we meet on today. I'm a proud Aboriginal woman from Warragai, which is north of Newcastle. I'd like to acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders on this land, which we call what we call. I'd like to thank elders who cared for this land and mountains and rivers, waters and looked after the community to make sure that they had a good life. I would like to acknowledge elders, past, present and emerging, and hope that the land and culture will grow with our future generations. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Hayley. I would also like to pay my respect to deaf elders who have come before us. And I see many of them in this room who have grown up or have children that will grow up into the deaf community that will be filled with language and culture that will sustain them. Thank you. 
Okay, so now back to the task at hand. The 2022 Australian Olympic Games will be here um, over two councils, Newcastle and Lake Macquarie. Who's excited? Yes, lots of excitement here in the room, fantastic. I'm really excited too and really inspired, I can't wait. So we might start with the PowerPoint, um, focusing on different parts of the games and some of the different roles and responsibilities of people within the working group, the games organising committee. Uh, those are the people behind the scenes doing bookings and lots of work. And tonight you'll see how much work they're actually doing behind the scenes. Uh, this morning we celebrated the one year to go launch. We had a really nice turnout and that was held at Newcastle Museum. Both Newcastle and Lake Macquarie uh, Lord Mayors were in attendance. And they were really proud and really excited to have the games here. We also had the local MP uh, turn up, which was really exciting for us. Um, they're giving us some funding, as well as both councils will be supplying some funding for us to run the games in this area, which was, it was a very exciting launch this morning. I want to ask Andrew to help with the PowerPoint, just to move to the next slide, please. Okay, good job. Okay, here's a brief explanation of where the games are. The games will be held here by Deaf Sports Australia and we've held them since 1964. Where were the games in 1964? Does anyone in the room know? Melbourne, Adelaide, no. First games were held in Sydney and have been held every four years since. Next year will be the 19th Australian Men Games, which is a pretty great achievement. But really, if we look back in history, uh, Australian Men Games really started back in the day in 1911. I'm sure stories have been passed on from our Men Builders to the younger generations. As I said before, we have three main funding streams. The New South Wales Government, Destination New South Wales. Both Lake Macquarie and Newcastle Councils. And this morning, uh, we were very excited to announce our major sponsors for the Australian Games next year. Our first being uh, Deaf Services and Deaf Society uh, both have sponsored the games, which is really exciting. Um, they have merged over the last year, so uh, it's so good to see the Deaf Society supporting us in 2022 uh, and to have both organisations on board, which is really exciting. So we thank them for that. Uh, the second major sponsor is West Group. Uh, they're a big company here in and they're supporting us as well. We'll talk a bit about what sponsorship looks like a bit later. We couldn't organise the games without these major sponsors, so it's really important that we have all this support. We're expecting over a thousand people to come into the area for Australian Deaf Games, uh, to support local businesses in council. Um, so we want them, but they're making space for us to make sure that we have great games have lots of fun and we're able to get together as a community and go home happy with our buckets filled and to have a really good uh, games. Okay, here's the next slide. The Games Organising Committee. You can see the names up there. They're working very hard. Was that 2019? Is that when they started? 2019. Yeah, so they started back in 2019. That was when the committee was established. And a lot of them are from New South Wales, but obviously it's not just me. There's a lot of other people here. We've got Andrew and many others, other staff organising events here. So I'd really like to acknowledge those people. We've got Lisa, acting chairperson. We've also got the ceremonies coordinator, who is come up here. Okay. Hi, I'm Andrew and I'm very excited to be organising the ceremonies, the opening and closing ceremonies. Uh, 
and work with a social programs coordinator. So there's three of those, or well, four of them actually, but three of them tonight. So we've got Jika, Hamish, and David. Do you want to come up and say hello? Hi. Hi. Hello. My name's Jika, and this is my sign name like this. I'm from Sydney, and I've been involved in tennis for a long time, running a Facebook group organising the social schedule, so I really look forward to having a chat with you all later. Hi, my name is Katie. This is my sign name. Uh, this is an amazing team. Now, the social program coordinators this is an amazing team, so it's really good to see you all, and I'm very excited. Hello, my name is David Parker. I'm also from Sydney, and I'm also very excited to be involved in the social program here. Uh, we've got uh, also involved in the sports program, which is an amazing week. So we have over a thousand athletes come here, and that will be amazing. So 
Watch it out. My favorite cruise. Next, I've got the Oceana liaison, which is Kate and Mother Lisa. So come up, guys. Hi. Hello. My name's Kate. This is my son and My husband, I think that's his son and Australian Deaf Games um, 
that they haven't had patrons or representatives for the, for the games. We're very excited to announce we have two co-patrons. It's a bit hard to see here on the PowerPoint. But I might move over just to, to point, if that's okay. The first co-patron is Katie Kelly. She lives on the Gold Coast, but is born and bred Newcastle. She's deaf and has Usher syndrome, and has been involved in the Paralympics for the triathlon, which includes running, cycling, swimming. Um, so she's been involved uh, at the last Olympics in Rio, and won a gold medal over there, which is quite impressive. Her aim is to go to Tokyo uh, this August and repeat her success. So um, hopefully with all the COVID issues, it's a smooth sailing Olympics um, and she'll be able to uh, repeat that success. But she's, in, she's fully into training at the moment um, and Katie's been involved in supporting the community um, and getting deaf, deaf, deaf blind people involved in sports. She's also on the Deaf Sports Australia board. So that's Katie. Um, our other co-patron, which I'm sure everybody in the room knows very well, is Cindy Lou. We're really pleased that Cindy has been able to accept the position of co-patron. Um, I know she's an inspiration for many younger people um, with her experience in the Commonwealth Games and in different sports. Uh, she's always encouraging young people uh, regional towns to get involved in sports. So, Cindy, could you come up and say hello? Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you to Deaf Sports Australia for uh, giving me and Katie the opportunity to be involved as patrons of the Australian Deaf Games. It's a really big honour, and I just want to say thank you. You might be wondering what a patron does or we support. The Australian Deaf Games. We do interviews and media on things on social media. We interact with the community. Um, with me being a deaf person uh, and Katie being a deaf blind person, we're able to really work together to engage with all of communities. So I look forward to seeing you all there. Thank you. Thank you, Sydney. Uh, the one year to go launch event this morning uh, at Newcastle Museum, as I mentioned. Um, there was an eight year old girl, and she's deaf. She's quite shy. She came along with her mother this morning. Oh, she was so gorgeous. Uh, Cindy met with her and spoke with her. Uh, and she's really, uh, her dream is to swim, just like Cindy. So they had this beautiful chat this morning and it was for her someone to look up to. So I'm sure she's going to come along to the games and be absolutely enthralled by what she sees. So it's such a wonderful opportunity for our youth. Next slide, please. Okay, so briefly, we're looking at a map here on the PowerPoint, which might be hard for people online to see. But you can have a look on our website and we've got a more detailed map. But it's a map of Newcastle and Lake Macquarie and where the different venues are going to be. We're quite lucky that sports are all within a short distance of each other. The furthest a venue is from another is potentially 10 to 12 kilometres, which isn't too far at all. Um, and I'm sure the locals here would think that's absolutely nothing. We have an airport here, so people are able to fly directly into Newcastle. We have access to trains, buses, trams. Uh, both councils are supporting us to make sure we have access to public transport as well. Next slide, please, Andrew. Okay, so now we're moving on to sports. Gary, did you want to help go through this one? Uh, Sierra Bennett is not here tonight, so Gary has been working quite closely with her and holds the most knowledge, I think, about. Um, 
So there's obviously a number of sports. And um, basically we've been fortunate that we have been able to allocate the venues right across the two cities. Because it's a joint arrangement of the two cities, in theory we've got to share the venues equally between Lake Mac and Newcastle. Athletics more than likely will be at um, the Kirk Fairley um, um, running track near the National Park. Beach volleyball will be at uh, Nobby's Beach. Football and futsal or five aside, at least will be down the Football Academy at Spears Point. Golf will be Waratah Golf Club. Touch football will be National Park. Swimming, we're not sure yet, but it's likely to be down at Lake Mac at a smaller uh, swimming pool down that area. Netball will be at National Park. Table tennis is uh, at the um, Newcastle PCYC. Tennis is at the Broad Meadow, and basketball is at Broad Meadow next door to each other. Lawn bowls is at uh, Charles Sound Bowls Club. Basketball, as I say, is uh, at Broad Meadow. Rugby Sevens is a small rugby field in uh, Lake Mac. So you can see we've shared the, the venues throughout the two cities. Swimming and athletics will be run on a piggyback basis. That is, we're working with the local club, local association, and we'll have our athletes compete with the locals in, in their competition. Demonstration sports. Include uh, mountain sailing. Sailing is down at Belmont at the 16 foot sailing club. Um, mountain bike is at Awaba. Um, and triathlon, we're not sure yet, but we've got meetings coming up to organise again with a local club who we'll be able to piggyback off their event. Thank you.
for when their games or matches will be held. They work with Gary and Sierra to complete the timetable. So the schedule is not finalised. We've got the venues finalised, which is fantastic. Uh, the next stage now is negotiating with sports coordinators to see how many people they've got interested. The netball, for example, sometimes it's up to 80 people involved in netball. How many games they will need, what the schedule and their matches will look like. And we're hoping to have that released mm, around September. So a draft schedule in September. And there might be people involved in not just one sport, but a couple of sports. So this gives the uh, sports coordinators uh, a chance to be able to coordinate all the sports together. together. Just making sure I'm in the right position. I've been told by Lauren to stay on my spot. Thank you, Lauren. Um, and I'm sure you've got a lot of questions, but I'll ask you to keep those towards the end. Okay, moving to the next slide. So as long as, as along with the sports, we've got some other activities as well. Uh, we know that there's a, a strong social and cultural component to the Australian Deaf Games. People come along for fun and to catch up with people. Um, we introduce you to the social program and the ceremonies coordinator, being Andrew um, and, the, and Jika, David and Hayley. Um, I'll introduce you to Andrew now to give you a rundown of the ceremonies. Okay, so some information about the ceremonies. We've got a venue. It will be at the next entertainment centre, which is a fantastic venue, and it's in Newcastle CBD. And it's really not far from public transport. It's really accessible. Uh, and there's a strip of restaurants uh, along Darcy Street in Newcastle. And that venue is quite large. It has um, an excellent arena where we can, you can all see the stage and lots of different parts of the club, which is, is really accessible. Secondly, we'll have a games hub at the next entertainment centre as well, which is where we all get together, get updates, information, what's going on will be at the games hub. And then we'll also have the games expo, which is like the deaf community expo. So different uh, providers <coughs> and organisations or uh, people selling products such as art will come and set up a stall and the community is welcome to have a look. It's a fantastic venue. I'm so excited that we were able to get this venue. And we were only able to do this through the sponsorship of West Group. So that's the only way we were able to make this possible. So I'm sure you're going to go there in awe and say how wonderful it is. So we're really grateful for the sponsorship. The closing ceremony will be at Spears Point, and that's in the Lake Macquarie Council area. Uh, if you remember back to Orr River Donka, the opening was in one council, the closing was in another council, and we're looking at the same concept here. The opening ceremony, we're working out all the exciting details of the schedule and what it might look like. Um, I planned a really exciting opening. I won't share all the details right now, but something to look forward to. I think it's a perfect opportunity because with everything that's happened in the last 12 months with COVID, um, people have been home a lot, maybe you've got kind of socialise. This is a perfect moment to get everybody together and remember how to socialise, catch up with old friends and see everybody again. The closing ceremony will be in an open space. We're going to be working with the Lake Macquarie Council to make sure it's a bit of a festival vibe. We're going to really celebrate the athletes who have persevered through the games and trained and all the hard work leading up to the games. And it's a bit of time for a party. So hopefully New South Wales will win the cup again. <laughs> beat all those other states, uh, which means we need to put in the hard yards now and get everybody here to Newcastle. All right, that's all for me. Thank you. <coughs> oh, Andrew, I think you're a bit biased to New South Wales. Am I wrong? Thank you. Um, 
Thank you, Andrew. Okay, next up we have, was it, are the three of you going to come up? We've got the social committee, programs committee, so we'll invite them up. to play a part 
in both roles. Uh, also, as Kylie uh, rightly mentioned, just so we're going to have a lot of um, people, we need a lot of volunteers who will have deaf and hard of hearing and hearing people. Uh, so possibly over 100 volunteers for the games. That's who we had in Albury or Madonka. And they're, they're there so that people can ask their questions. And also we need backup in case people get sick and need to be replaced at the last minute. Um, if you have a look at our website, you'll be able to see there's a tab at the top for volunteers. And then you can click on that and see some more information that you can fill in there if you would like to volunteer. And that will be linked into our database. It's already open a couple of months ago, so you can already go on there and fill in that form if you like, uh, if you want to volunteer. So if there's any questions, we will answer them at the end. Move on to the next slide. Games registration. That actually opened up this morning. So if you remember from the past games, we have always had the early bird registration which is at a lower cost and I know you all want to know exactly what the cost is, I will tell you later. We, so today it opened and that the early bird registration lasts until June, is it, what's the date? When's the cut off of that? Come on Gary, you know everything. <laughs> Thanks. 
sport has a national peak organisation like Tennis Australia, Cricket Australia, uh, Law Bowls Australia, and we've been working with them to see if they can assist us in compressing these games. So we've got Table Tennis Australia and Bowls Australia. Um, we've got a couple of others coming. Um, and so we've got 40 uh, national peak bodies who are happy to support us. So the information will go up um, shortly. So we're we'll keeping an eye out on this page here. Um, if you want to volunteer, this is the section you'll be looking for. Along the top panel, it says volunteers. You click on volunteers and you put all your information on there. It's very easy to fill out. When you've finished collecting all the information, right down the bottom you click submit and all that information will get uploaded into a database. And that will list all your preferences of sports and time if you're interested in participating in ceremonies. Um, so then our coordinators can have all the information they need to allocate volunteers. Um, sports information here up on the top panel. If you hover over sports information, it gives you a drop down menu. Um, sports schedule there, which is not yet available. Sports locations. If you click on the link here, this will give you a document on where all the sport venues are. Um, and you can also click on the Google, Google Maps link which will open up the location where the ceremonies are, where the social programs are. Um, so Newcastle, Lake Macquarie, it's got a list here. And that's all available on the website. So if we go back to the website, Andrew. And if we have a look at games information on the top panel there, Hover over it and give you a drop down menu. And that will list uh, different information um, about Deaf Sports Australia, their information and history, the Games Organising Committee, who's involved, Newcastle and Lake Macquarie information, accommodation options. And just to let you know, accommodation, start booking now because when the games are held over the Easter holidays next year. So we anticipate that Newcastle is going to be a very popular hub for people to take their holiday breaks, so start looking now. We have some people coming from interstate. Um, we have a list of the best way to get here, using public transport and flying straight into Newcastle. We will keep updating that. And we know with COVID that flights are significantly dropped off, so we're hopefully Hoping that next year we'll have more flights available. Okay, I think that's all for the website. I'm going to open it up to the floor. Um, cricket and squash, what's happening with that? They're not listed. Ah, oh, great question, thank you. Um, Cricket, unfortunately, um, has been cancelled because uh, Cricket Australia have been working with us uh, and Deaf Cricket Australia to set up the national championships, the NCIC, which is a cricket, uh, national cricket inclusion uh, competition, which is in January, uh, and it's been running for three years. So all the cricketers are heading off to that in January. Um, and so we can't hold two tournaments because financially it's not viable for the players to pay for both tournaments. So um, we have tried to see if they uh, cricket Australia and would like to be involved in the Australian Games and do a championship. Um, we weren't we were successful this time, but we're hoping next time. Um, squash was popular back in the day, but um, we had a, we've only had two or three players pop up their hands for squash this time around. Um, other sports, um, uh, the newer sports are starting to take over a little bit in that, in that 
in that section there. Uh, there's a question about soccer. Uh, we have put all listed in the program. Um, we did have uh, soccer uh, or football, a football competition, uh, and futsal both running. Um, but futsal seems more viable with five side, and uh, with football being outdoors. Hello everybody. Um, I have been thinking about the Australian Games um, starting on the 16th of April next year. Is, is the plan then to select a team to go to the Brazil Games? There's quite a short turnaround time, those being hosted in May. Uh, thank you for your question, Lorraine. It's a good question. Uh, we are trying to work out um, the international, the link to international uh, games, Deaf Olympics. Uh, Deaf Olympics should be in December this year, in 2021. They obviously have been delayed to 2022 because of COVID. Um, but there's still a real question mark on Brazil and whether that's going ahead because COVID is still quite a serious situation over there. And we don't see um, us being able to freely fly over there uh, this time next year because we're still looking at quarantine restrictions. So that means they have to get there two weeks before competition to quarantine and two weeks when they come back to quarantine. Um, we have been uh, putting out expressions of interest for Brazil games. Um, or we haven't, sorry, because I think it's up to individual interests. We looked, we did a risk assessment for health and safety. December 2021, um, we made the decision that we wouldn't go ahead. It's been moved to May next year. And we're still really considering whether it's going to go ahead or not due to the COVID situation. Any more questions? I saw some people writing things down. Uh, everyone's a little bit shy. What's happening? You can ask people as forward as I thought they would be. Right. Any other questions? Um, one question I want to ask you then, if you don't have any questions for me. Uh, Newcastle and Lake Macquarie, where's the go to place? Where's the place that everyone should visit? Is it or socialise at? Is it here, part of RSL? Come up the front and tell me. So we'd love to know more about it to make sure we've got the right places on our list. Okay. Well, here at Cardiff, Cardiff RSL, it's the centre of where the community can meet up. It's a really good place. Um, and it's in the right location for everybody. Um, I'm also really happy to volunteer. Ask me anything. I'm happy to help out. Hi, my name's Kevin and I live here within the Cardiff area. Um, I always come here because of this man over here. He's, he can sign, did you know that? And he, we can communicate with him so easily. I love coming here. Oh, we're just learning, are we? We'll see. <laughs> um, this area is peaceful, it's beautiful, it's easy to come to. We love coming here, thank you. He put in the hard yards for us, we really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, did you want to come up here? So, um, we've got one of the weapons here, and we're also in the Facebook live stream, um, and we've had a lot of support here to get everything ready. Um, and so we really want to thank you so much for that. Did you want to say hello? Hi. Hi, my name's Brennan. I'm oh, a junior manager. Oh, sorry. Each other to come up and stand next to you. Yeah. Hi, my name is Brennan. I'm a junior manager here at Cardiff RSL Club. Uh, looking, uh, looking forward to the games in 2022. Can't wait for it to happen. And I hope to see you all here. Thank you. Oh, 
further demonstration sports. Um, we can't add any more. Uh, like I said, it's a lot of work to organise all of that and we're running out of time. So uh, at the moment, we're, we're thinking about chess. That could be a possibility. We have had that before. But uh, yeah, if you want to get involved in that and play chess, then yes, that's a possibility. Just hold on for a second. Um, we also might have Esports. Um, it could be virtual reality gaming. Um, we wear a virtual reality headset. That's quite a new idea for a lot of people. But um, yeah, especially <laughs> younger people, that's a big sporting event for them. So you never know. That might be possibility. Okay. Next question. Can you come up.
the children and they were able to have some fun activities arranged for them. And um, obviously, when they first arrived, they might be a little bit um, shy and they had someone there that could introduce them to each other. So we would really like to encourage someone to encourage them with their social skills and to be able to really enjoy the games and have fun throughout that week. So if anyone wants to get involved in that, we would love to hear from you.
many people that have deaf children um, were able to come, but the news I think would be really good exposure to show the mainstream community about the games. I think that would be a fantastic opportunity here in the local area. Thank you for that information. Um, that's why we're here tonight, to get all that local information so we can make this um, the great games that we want it to be. You know, being involved here with Cardiff RSL, meeting the local people here, um, we love getting all this information. Uh, we can note it all down and follow up. Um, but as soon as uh, the information uh, question and answer bit is finished, uh, the Games Organising Committee are here, so just meet with one of us and we'll be able to note down your information and stay in touch. Do we have another question? Hello everybody. Hi. I'm from here from um, Castle. Um, I've been involved with the deaf community as well as the disabled community for some time now. Um, we have a big deaf-blind community here um, who aren't really involved in sports. I don't know if we can invite them to be volunteers or sell tickets or how we can get them involved. Yeah, thank you. We'd love to work with the local community who know the people here, especially the deaf-blind community that's here. Um, to ensure that they're included in the social programs, um, included in the opening and closing ceremony, that they have the interpreting support and communication support that they need in order to attend these events. We know that the Deaf Society um, is also located in Newcastle and Lake Macquarie, um, but we want to make sure that every person that comes along has all the access that they need. So if we talk, for example, um, walking netball, we can involve deaf blind people in that. We can have um, tactile uh, interpreters, we can have guides, we, you know, we're happy to support the deafblind community here in Newcastle. Hello, it's me again. Um, I'm talking about deaf children again. I just had another idea. Uh, it might be nice, as Christine was talking about, um, why, are we, why, why do we get in touch with the local schools? Because we know that a lot of our deaf kids here in Newcastle and Lake Macquarie are in mainstream schools. So I think at the same time, it would be good for the future of sports. We need to make sure that they know about the games so they can get involved in the games. Yeah, that's really, really important. Um, issue that you bring up, that we get involved with mainstream schools here in Newcastle um, and the deaf and hard of hearing children here, you know, on the Central Coast, Lake Macquarie, Newcastle and surrounding areas, all across New South Wales, even Queensland, we want them to come and be involved. But also, Andrew has it in his grand plan for the ceremonies to have young children involved. So I do want to introduce you to a person who's working in New South Wales on a children's program. Her name is Lauren Townsend. She works for Deaf Sports Australia, but is based here in New South Wales. And she works part-time for Deaf Sports Australia. Lauren would be the best contact to get information out to schools about Australian games or about any sports that impact children that are school age. Lauren would be your best contact. Lauren, could you come up here for a sec? Lauren, could you tell us a bit about your work? Yes, thank you. Um, I've noticed some questions that have come through on the live stream and here in the room. Um, there's lots of questions about children. My job and the aim of my role is to encourage deaf and hard of hearing children to participate in sports. So if you work at a school, or uh, you want to set up a sports camp or a youth sports camp or anything along those lines, please do get in touch. Um, some of you here I know already want to talk to me. 
and I will be available after this. I'll give you my card, I hopefully brought them. Um, but I can give you my information um, and we can have a chat after that. Um, and just one more thing I wanted to add about Lauren. So Lauren also has a dual role. Uh, she works at Desk Sports um, in media and communications, which means that she's responsible for the website, for Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram. So if you see Desk Sports Australia on social media, um, and she's taken on some of that Australian Games responsibility as well. So she's been doing a lot of work and working really hard. So she's been working uh, with another person to set up the website um, and we really want this to be depth led so if you've got any ideas get in touch with Lauren um, and you can do all this yourself can you? So Australian Games responsibility for the website, the hours, can you do it? Well I can do it but I can't do it, with, I can't do it alone, I need to support a Sports Australia, the Games Organising Committee and everyone else behind me. And do you need volunteers? Oh, 100%, please. Please put up your hand to be a volunteer. We need your help. So this is a perfect example where volunteers uh, can really assist. If you know a bit about websites, about technology, about social media, um, when the games get closer, those platforms are going to become quite active with videos and stories and different things. And through the games, there'll be daily updates about competition, who wins, etc., etc. So, you'd be looking to work with Lauren and a couple of other people as a media and communications team, which is so vital to the games. So, if you've got skills in that area, please do get in touch with Lauren um, or pop your information into the volunteers link on our website. Thank you so much, Lauren. Thank you. Yes, okay, good. Uh, so looking at the time, we're ticking along, and I think it's about time to close. Uh, so we will wrap up for the evening. Uh, Gary's got his hand up. Last question, Gary, lucky last. When you go, uh, there's a number of posters and notepads and uh, save your date. Uh, flyers there, so if you want to take them home, feel free to do so. Two more things. One is the website later this year will have an online merchandising um, system where you can pre order items from the website. And the other thing is during the games, there'll be a, a, um, an online photography system whereby we have, we'll have photographers at the games taking many photos at opening ceremonies closing ceremonies, obviously the sporting events, and you'll be able to download photos of yourself for free. So watch that space. Um, it's a rather exciting technology now that we're, and a particular organisation now being able to develop and then come on board. Thank you.
I really appreciate everybody coming along tonight. I know some of you have travelled a really long way, um, so I ask that you drive safely home. Um, the second thing is that we will have um, a road show. So this is not the first or the last time we will be here. This is not the last time we will be here. Um, we're also heading out to Canberra, um, Queensland, Brisbane, Perth, Adelaide, and we're going to share some information about the games. We'll give you a timeline of when that might happen, um, but we want the community to come along and show their support. And please don't forget, um, when we're talking about the games, it's not only the sports, um, but if you do want to talk about the sports, you speak to Lauren, um, or to Gary, or to Sierra. Um, so please make sure that you're in touch about your sports if you need to be. Uh, tonight's Facebook Live has been recorded and that will be posted on our website and the captions will be also included once we uh, YouTube. There, if you click on the closed captions or the CC button, um, that's where captions will come up if you need them. So please do get in touch um, if you need anything in there. But thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you to Brennan uh, and your technology skills have been beautiful. Thank you to our interpreters, Kylie and Alana. Uh, and thank you to everybody for coming along tonight. I really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you.